Hi, today we will be talking about what science has to say about taking vitamin C after a workout. A couple of decades ago, science discovered free radicals. And free radicals are, are, are basically uh, chemically unstable compounds that circulate through your body and cause damage. Got a link here. The oxidative stress has been linked to heart disease, cancer, arthritis, stroke, respiratory diseases, immune deficiency, etc. So these oxidative stresses were seen as a very bad thing. And then they discovered that while exercising, humans generate an enormous quantity of these ROSs, reactive oxidative species. And so people reacted by taking antioxidants such as vitamin C or vitamin E after a workout to reduce the amount of oxidative damage that was that was being done by these free radicals. And then science evolved a little bit and discovered that uh, when your body was generating these free radicals, that was a signaling mechanism. And it signaled to your body that repair was needed and so on. So I want to spend a few minutes going through what the research tells us. Some people say that uh, taking antioxidants after a workout will help reduce soreness. Other people counter by saying that, you know, really what, what's going to happen is you're going to um, mute the effects of exercising because you're shutting off the signaling pathway. Okay, so I'm going to start with an article in 2003, a long time ago. Um, basically, it was a, they did a study, they, they took two groups, they gave one of them vitamin C and they gave one of them a placebo. And what the study found was there really wasn't much of a difference in soreness with the groups who had the placebo and those who had vitamin C. Let's move on to another article. Here's another article from 2012 asking the question, does vitamin C supplementation impair favorable adaptations of regular exercise? That's the real question. Does taking these antioxidants impair the benefit that we're expecting to get from the exercise? Scroll to the bottom. There's a lot of scrolling. This is a long article and I'll include links to all of these if you want to want to read them. Um, <clears throat> the conclusion, based on the conflicted evidence regarding the effects of higher intakes of vitamin C, a permanent intake of non-physiological -physi doses of vitamin C and or E should not be recommended to healthy individuals. This must not be confused with a high intake of fruit and vegetables, which is considered safe and beneficial. So the study said they couldn't recommend taking large quantities of vitamin C or E after a workout. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, now we have a rat study, and admittedly, rats are different from humans, but here's, here's what they found. The headline says it all. Uh, vitamin C administration attenuates overload-induced skeleton, skeletal muscle hypertrophy in rats. In other words, skeletal muscle growth that would normally result from exercise did not happen in rats when they were given vitamin C. Here we move on to another study done in 2014, and what this study what this study found was somewhat inconclusive. They, on, on one hand, they found that uh, it, it altered the proteins that were secreted. However, you know, scroll and clear to the bottom, and again, this is a long scroll to get to the bottom. It didn't appear to impair muscle growth, but it did appear to affect protein. So they said, our results are equivocal. All right, let's move on to the next one. This one is from the year 2017 and it deals with muscle soreness. So typically after you've done a very heavy exercise or after you've exercised for the first time in a long time or after you've done negatives, negatives are where you are fighting against a weight that is heavier than you can lift and so you're lowering it onto yourself and it's very intense. Um, soreness usually occurs 24, 72 hours later. So they had people take large doses of vitamin C and E after exercising to see if that would reduce the soreness. Let's scroll down to the results. There is moderate to low quality evidence that high dose antioxidant supplementation does not result in muscle soreness after exercise at the 6, 24, 48, 72, and 96 hours. So there doesn't appear to be a reduction in muscle soreness from taking vitamin C and vitamin E. By the way, I'll, I'll put in that I did find some articles that said that vitamin E and C did help reduce muscle soreness. Um, those articles were written primarily by um, vitamin companies. So 
figure. Next article, this one is from 2016, and it asks the question very directly. Do antioxidant supplements interfere with skeletal muscle adaptation to exercise training? If you take antioxidants after exercising, does that interfere with muscle growth? All of these are really pretty good, and I'll include links to them in the uh, video information section if you want to check them out. Here we go. Taking together the effect supplementation has on skeletal muscle adaptation to exercise training, is still equivocal. While there's no convincing evidence to support antioxidant supplementation, there's a growing body of literature suggesting it may hamper or prevent the signaling of important adaptations such as muscle mitochondrial biogenesis, insulin sensitivity, and hypertrophy. So while it's still inconclusive, there's a growing body of evidence that it may interfere with the signaling that causes hypertrophy and other benefits to take place. Go to one more. This one is from 2019. And this one uh, was a study done with young women. Let me just scroll down to the graphs. They had a uh, vitamin group, a placebo group, and a control group. I, I don't know what the, I guess the control group didn't, didn't take anything. So <clears throat> here's the percent change in fat-free mass. This is, uh, call it muscle mass. Um, the placebo group did better than the vitamin group, and the control group really didn't, didn't change much. So what that would indicate is that the placebo group, one who didn't take anything, got some pretty decent results from working out, and the people that took the vitamins got lower results from working out. Now let's look at um, fat mass. The fat mass dropped in the placebo group and not nearly as much in the vitamin group. In other words, once again, we're seeing that uh, vitamins actually appear to be hampering the results. I could go on and on and on, and there are a lot of studies, but that seems to be essentially what information we have to deal with right now is there really isn't any compelling evidence that taking antioxidants, vitamin C and E, for example, has a positive impact on you. It doesn't help you bulk up better, um, it doesn't reduce soreness, and it appears to impair the signaling that is required for hypertrophy to take place. If your experience is different, please let me know in the comments. That's all I have. Thank you for watching.